We about to tune in to that Lachey vibes. Lachey vibes. Approximately 225 people. You have 12 motor vehicles and they got 14 bars. The priorities are right, man. Fishing a big part of their industry. And yearly folks move across from it. They have tournament fishing for blue marlins, white marlins, sailfish, wahoos, tunas, and Spanish mackerel. One of the blue marlins, the boat of that British island out there, it still holds the record being over 1,200 pounds. Wow. And north of it, lies the Atlantic while we're looking at Caribbean Sea around us. Now look at Great Thatch Island. See that's the one like a saddle, a big one. It's an uninhabited of a British virgin. The big one up front of it, that's Mary's Point, US. So you now see how close the US and British Virgin Islands are. The only thing that separates the US from the British Virgin, a passage of water going up right between there, known as Sir Francis Drake's Passage. It was named for Drake when he sailed through here, going to Puerto Rico to attack. Spaniards strong Puerto Rico met them between there outmaneuvered them they named the passage for him that small K over there that's whistling K when these islands were Danish West Indian Islands Denmark had their custom out on that small K of the nations that you don't see in Jan Danes they were the last to own these islands before the United States purchased it was around 1700 when Danes settled when on St. John and started cultivating land for sugar. Sugar was the largest industry in St. John until 1848. See, July 3rd, 1848, slavery abolished it. Sugar then declined. So owners of sugar plantations, mainly Englishmen, Dutchmen, and French, they stacked up. They went on to Europe where the sugar beet had just been discovered. Others remaining here, they grew cotton and tobacco. Some of them worked with the Bayrum industry. St. John had a beautiful start from 1700, but the island faced a couple of setbacks 1733. The summer of 1733, the island hit by a drought, dried up most of the crop slaves had in their garden. Then the fall of 1733, island plagued by hurricane, wiped out remain of crops remaining from that summer. So the enslaved guys at the time had little food remaining to eat. They turned to the overseers, they asked for rationing food, they were turned down. They grew even angrier. On November 23rd of 1733, they started off a rebellion, which went on till the last week in May of 1734. During the rebellion at St. John, there were 208 indentured servants, 1,087 Africans, and both tribes participated in that rebellion. Today, we are on an island 1,450 miles southeast of New York. We're 1,100 miles from Miami. We're 1,200 miles from Panama. We are located at 18.5 degrees north of the equator at 69.17 miles per degree. So now you know exactly where we are. We become the second largest plantation owner in St. John, being born a slave, when he had purchased Francis Bay, combined it with the Annaberg for $100 back then. Was a very influential guy. George went out there after the abolition to the owners and had them turn over some of the property to their workers before they went back to the European country. That's where some of the Arawak Indians settled when they moved along to here back then. The Carib came after and they chased them around, captured their crops, used to be corn and cassava. The little Mahori one in the center coming up and there was a campsite on the hillside and that's permanently closed. Based on the fact they sold the property, did not renew their lease, so no longer exist Mahobe Campus. The highest point in the background, that Sage Mountain over on Tortola, 1740 feet from sea level, is that Sage Mountain out there. The hillside where you see that grey roof building, a lady from the mainland, Ethel McCauley, moved to the island 1948. At that time, was going to Tortola sailing, fell in love with the hillside then and asked her captain let her off. He refused to do so. She outmaneuvered the captain. She jumped ship. She swam ashore. She did all right. Started building what you seen in 49. Completed in 51 and moved in. Meanwhile, she building, she had no vehicles to pull the sand, the gravel, or lumber. Did own seven donkeys. So on completion of building, she wrote two books. One was in tribute to the, and was titled, My Ass and I. And the other was Grandma. Grazer was through the grandmother. And uh, that's Mary's point. That's the point when 19 slaves are jumped off of, committed suicide during the rebellion of 1733, rather than going back to get um, captured 
and they um, they go through the punishment that they had to go through, which um, if you, they call it the maroon as a runaway slave. And if you get caught, they'll cut off maybe a left leg and a right arm to keep your balance. So well, that's the marriage point. So have you ever read about it? I want to thank everybody for checking out the channel. Got news and travels like trips to Bahamas, the islands, Jamaica. Wise words for the day. 